I bought 10 Xbox One X boards, I bought 7 PS5 boards, and I bought 10 Xbox Series S boards, and they come to £644.78. I'm pretty sure these boards, these Series S boards, worked out at around about £35 each. But they're sold as scrap boards, but they do come with the SSDs. So, yeah, if there's nothing wrong with the SSD, then there's my money back right there, just in the SSDs alone. So, don't have a clue what's wrong with them at all. So what I am going to do is just, well, first of all, put some thermal paste on because otherwise it'll just instantly overheat. So yeah, I'm going to put a heat sink on this and then I'll see what's actually wrong with it. Right, don't have a front panel for an LED on this, but do I really need one? No. No, I don't. Uh, well, it might help if I actually plugged it in, hadn't it? Well, hey ho. Alright, do we get any fan spin? Nope. We also get no power. When I sort out the pins on the front. Completely no power. Okay. Cool. Right. So, let's take it back apart. I'll see what the deal is, shall we? Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you've got a simple project that requires a quick mod board, or you want to launch your own products to the world, PCBWay can help. With fantastic pricing on multi-layer PCBs, flex PCBs, 3D printing, and even laser cutting solutions, you're sure to get everything you need all in one place. Custom PCBs start from just $5 for a one to two layer board with a fast 24 hour build time and free shipping on orders over $30. PCBWay are also proud to announce their new aluminium PCBs, which start at just $120 per square meter. Check out what PCB we have to offer by clicking on the link in the video description or the top pin comment and get your project started today. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to the repair. So, if we're getting no power at all on this, I've got a feeling we might have a short on the 12 volt rail. Chances are usually if we've got a no power at all, it's either a short on the 12 volt rail or a missing 3.3 volt. So I've got my meter in continuity. And yep, we have a short. That's dead short, 0 0.1 ohms. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is hook this up to my bench power supply. I'm not going to give it 12 volts because that's just stupid. I'm going to give it 1 volt. And we're getting a full 5 amps of current draw. That'd be a lot of current draw. So let's get my thermal cam on the go, shall we? And hello, we have a hotspot. on what appears to be the top MOSFET. Let's just get the macro lens on the go. And yep, we definitely have a short. Let's just try and pinpoint it. In fact, it doesn't even appear to be on the MOSFET. It appears to be on the capacitors. So, just on these here. And they do look quite burnt as well. So, let's just have a look under the scope. So, that's where the short was. It looks like we've got liquid damage here. And, yep, that is definitely short. How about these ones? Yep, I think these are all probably going to show up as short. Because they're all connected together. Uh, these ones actually look rather good. Although they are still showing up as short. Because like I said they're all connected together. So I'm going to remove these top two capacitors. Right, so I've got my hot air at 480. I'll try and focus this heat on the caps. Instead of on this aluminium cap at the side of it.
So there's those removed. They'd have to be replaced anyway, so I'm just going to remove them both. Sorry, it was a little bit out of focus there, but never mind. Let's just have another look and just see. We are still short, so I'm going to remove probably the MOSFET, I would say. Uh, in fact, no, I'm going to remove that cap just there. See how easy that come off then? Let's have a look. Is it still short? It is. Okay, so now I'll remove the MOSFET. Uh, but then again, there's still some burnt components. I'm going to remove the caps first, actually. Like all of these caps. Okay, so that one's off. That one's off. Yeah, so they come off really, really easily. So all of these caps are going to need replacing anyway. But it is probably going to be one of the MOSFETs that's bad. Oh, well. It looks like someone's already replaced the MOSFETs. Let's have a look now. Let's see what the deal is. It's still short. Okay, so I'm going to let that board cool down. And then I'll get the thermal camera back on it. Still appears to be that tray. So I'm going to remove the MOSFET, I think, because... Well... Even though it's the trace which is getting hot where the caps were it doesn't necessarily mean it is that they would have had to be changed anyway but there we go back under the scope I'll remove this mosfet actually is there anything underneath here yes there is there's some caps underneath and they are burnt ah well yeah these are going to be bad these are definitely going to be short look at that i should have probably checked that first I mean, like I said, they've got to be replaced anyway, but should have probably checked that first, but it's all good. So these are definitely going to be short. You can see how burnt those end caps are. 100% they're bad. Bink. Bink. Uh, no more. No more short. 800 ohms and increasing. Yeah, so the MOSFETs are fine. Just the caps that were bad. Um, most likely just those back caps, but to be honest, these ones had to be replaced anyway because they were burnt up and stuff, so it's fine. I guess we just rebuild this now and it should, in theory, turn on. Okay, rather than punishing my entire viewer base and making you sit through an hour and a half of just replacing components, I thought I'd fast forward through this and play a little bit of chilled music. Let me know what you think in the comments. But sit back, relax, enjoy the music, and enjoy watching me suffer.
Oof. Uh oh. We have a little bit of damage to the SSD. We've got a cap which is knocked off. Other than that, it's fine. Um, it just looks like the caps took a bit of impact. Probably in transit because it wasn't packaged very well. I don't want to put any more heat on the SSD, so I am going to zoom right in. And I'm going to try and solder it by hand. It looks like it's just been knocked off in transit. I should be able to solder that by hand. The problem is we've got this chip here, and this is the uh, SSD controller. I don't want to put heat on that if I can help it because it doesn't like it. So I'm going to avoid that by just soldering it back on manually. If I can. Damn it, you can't even see it. I've made a bit of a mess of that solder joint. Turn it around. Hold it in place. Well, I'm not bothered if it's on a bit of a slant, to be honest. I'll try and straighten it up, but... There you go. Perfectly fine. There we go. Sorted. I really wasn't bothered too much by that cap. It probably still would have worked fine, but... Yeah, I'd rather sort it out anyway. Just make sure I've got the right... Uh, yeah, I have. I'm just making sure I've got the right board. Right, moment of truth. I can't see any more liquid damage. That was a lot of liquid damage, to be honest. A lot more than, than I would have liked. It is what it is, I guess. Do we get a fan spin? We do! Ha <laughs> ha! As Lewis Rossman would say, fan spin. Still with the same series here, yeah, it's had a lot more liquid damage than I thought. Does it turn on? I don't have a power button, so we're not going to be able to see an LED, but we should see the fan spin up. Uh oh. It's beep on beep off. Oh, you suck ass, man. All of that and it's beep on beep off. Damn it. Oh, well, that's a bit gutting, isn't it? The question is, what rails are we missing? And the problem is, are we going to be able to find out? Because, well, these boards are really freaking awkward to actually test the rails. They are incredibly awkward to test the rails. I'm not ready to give up just yet. I am going to try and figure out if we're missing any rails or not. So, if I just grab... <laughs> Pardon me. 12 volts. Okay, so it does attempt to turn on. Now I've got to figure out where my rails are. Why are we getting minus 10 volts? Damn it. Wrong ground. Ha! 1.8 volts. I was going to say, what the hell? <laughs> um, right, let me just have a look. So we've got a 5 volt there. Yep, 5.13 volts. So that's present. I'm using the other board as a reference point, by the way. Because the V1 boards have got the silk screen on. 12 volts, no drop. Yeah, the other boards have got the reference points on, whereas these... New boards haven't. 3v3 standby is present. SB1 standby, I think that's there. 1.1 standby, but I need to. Sorry, 1.1 safe bridge, but I need to prompt it to boot. Yeah, we do get it. It doesn't stay on for long enough, but we do get it. 1.8 standby is present. 1.1 standby is present. 
uh, we have what appears to be all of the main rails. We've obviously got 3.3 .3 because it's attempting to turn on. Yeah, so I'm getting 3.3. .3. We have what appears to be all of the main rails. So, either one of two things here. Either it sent 12 volts to the APU and killed it when we had a short on the 12 volt rail. Or the SSD that's in this is wrong. Not the correct one. So, one of two things. What it's going to be, I do not know. But, I don't think it's worth continuing anymore. All of the rails are present, that means the APU is probably not turning on. That sucks. Let's find out which one of those two things it's going to be. Because if this stays on with the SSD removed, then the chances are it's the wrong SSD. Not that I can get mad, because they are sold as scrap. They're sold with an SSD, but... Does it have to be the right SSD? Technically not. The fan spins, we know it's staying on. No. It's not. It's not staying on. It is not staying on. So I think it's probably sent 12 volts to the APU. Possibly. That might have sent 12 volts to the APU. It's very possible. Um, 12 volt goes into the MOSFETs here and then it distributes what it needs to distribute and chances are it could have sent 12 volts to the APU. I can't see any more damage so unless there's a MOSFET which has failed which to be honest even if one of the MOSFETs failed the, there's plenty of backups if that makes sense. I can't see one MOSFET failing causing a beep on beep off. These will work with one one MOSFET missing. Uh, albeit they won't run at full power, but that will work. And I've got all the voltage rails, so it, it, it stands a chance that it could have killed the APU. I'll take it as a loss. You know what? It was fun. I enjoy re rebuilding things. It's therapeutic. But yeah, these 10 boards, 1-0 to the boards. I'm not wasting any more time. I've spent an hour and a half on it. Well, hour and 40 minutes I've spent on that. Not worth any more time. Not for the sake of reselling it for like 120, 130, 130 pound. What I will do is just check the SSD. There we go. It's good. And look at that, it's virtually brand new. 102 hours, that's nothing. Oh, what a beauty. It's virtually brand new. Look at it. 102 hours. I'll take that all day. So we've got a good SSD out of it. We've also got loads and loads of donor parts which we can use. Yeah, that's a win right there. Definitely. So that's a good SSD. That'll go in my box of spare SSDs. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. But I'll get 50 quid for that. So, happy days. I'll get 50 quid all day long for that SSD. 512 gig, 2230, official Xbox SSD. Someone will buy it. Yeah, so that'll just go in my donor pile. It's all good. Tis a win, my friends.